I read Aristotle first and I was just like, oh, this is such a cute one. It's so like heartwarming and everything. And then you have this one and it's like, bam, toxicity, darkness, despair. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the end of January. I was gonna say December, it's gone so quickly. But yes, so I'm actually filming this a couple of days early. So it's on the 29th that I'm filming it. So I am currently in the middle of reading House of Earth and Blood by Sarah Jo Mars. I say in the middle, I'm not even in the middle yet. I'm hoping I should get it finished in that time. It probably will take me a little bit longer, but I would have read the majority of it within January. So I'm adding it into this month and it's gonna come out as five stars. This is a reread. It's the third time that I've read it. If you don't know what it's about, it is an an urban adult fantasy at the start of a new series and we have lots of different creatures you have fey vampires shifters angels sprites like there's just so much going on and we're in this town called crescent city two years ago there was a brutal murder and our main character bryce was in the center of it all now two years later they seem to be happening again and so she's pulled into the investigation to help them find out why this is happening. She has the help of Fallen Angel Hunt. They have a bit of a slow burn romance going on as well. Very slow for Sarah J Mars, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, the second book is coming out in February. I'm super excited for it, hence the reread. Absolutely loved this. I will say at the start of the book, it's very info dumpy. There is a lot of swearing in this book but when you get further into it it does actually work and the info dumpiness obviously slows down because you have an understanding of the world. Okay so if we include that reread that brings my total books read to 10 books this month and a total of 4446 pages. That's actually really good for me. I didn't expect it to be that high because the last couple of weeks I haven't really read much. Anyway we'll get on to the books. So the most recent book I actually finished which I finished it from me filming this last night. And that is Circe and the Cyclops by Homer. So this is a little Black Penguin classic. It has two stories in it. It's not really stories, they're kind of excerpts from the Odyssey. And that is a book that I'm interested in getting because I've finished the Iliad. I did enjoy it. It is a bit repetitive and even in these little short stories you could see the repetitiveness, like with Dawn and her rose-tipped fingers. like that was a sentence that was used a lot in this but once you get used to it it's actually quite good so it is making me very intrigued to pick up the next book this came out as a low four stars i mean what's there to say it's a greek mythology and i like it if you're interested in reading the odyssey or the iliad i would actually pick up these because it gives you a taste of the writing style and make sure that you can actually get on with it which speaking of the iliad we have the iliad again by homer and this is all about the battle of troy who are in the 10th and final year of the battle of Troy and obviously we're seeing the argument between Achilles and Agamemnon about Agamemnon taking Achilles prize and how Achilles then refuses to help because of it and you have different perspectives you have some from the Trojans some from the Greeks you have some from the gods which I really liked that part of it this took me ages to read though because I actually started this in November this came out as a 3.5 stars I think I just wasn't ready for it when I started it in November. Like I was interested and I wanted to read it, but I didn't realize how repetitive and stuff it was going to be. Now that I'm used to that writing style, I can appreciate it a lot more. But this one was so focused on the war. There were so many scenes where it was all about the battle and there were literally just lists of the people that had died and how they died and who they were and like their ancestry that that was quite hard to get through, hence the 3.5 stars. So I'm hoping the Odyssey will be a little bit easier, but obviously that won't be anytime soon. Then we have the biggest book I've read this month and that was the book I started off with and that's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This was 4.5 stars and honestly I loved it. This is my favourite book of the month if we exclude the reread but honestly even between the two because I've read that it will be my third time this one still kind of comes out on top for me just because it was something different. I loved this. So we are kind of set, if you've read a Jane Austen book, we're kind of set in that time period. We've got that sort of like sensibilities and everything, the way they're so polite and yet rude to one another in the way that they word things and everything. So you have that as your setting, but alongside that you have English, fairy tale, folklore, and magic. 
and I loved the combination. It was so beautiful. Now this book isn't for everyone, it's got masses and masses of footnotes to try and get through which honestly some of them I said it as I was reading this book some of them I absolutely loved because they were like little mini fairy tale stories within the story and others of them I just thought were a bit pointless. I mean the book itself the writing the imagery is just stunning absolutely stunning it is a bit long it is a bit slow in places one particular character's perspective I didn't like reading from but that's because of who he was and that's actually Mr Norrell and he is the magician he claims himself to be the last magician in England he's very strict about how magic should be used and how it should be regulated he as a character is a very dry boring person and a lot of people find him that way and he's written that way which I just think is excellent writing and then you have John Jonathan Strange and he's a bit more chaotic and all over the place and he doesn't focus on a lot of things and again you can really tell that when you're reading there. We also have some parts where we are at war, Jonathan Strange goes to help in the war against France and you have the Battle of Waterloo mentioned in here as well so you do have some of those war scenes as well. It's just fantastic. So you have perspectives from Mr Norrell, Jonathan Strange and a couple of other side characters. I think it's brilliant, I'm so pleased I read this, it's definitely something I would reread but you'd really have to be in the mood for it to tackle those footnotes and obviously the slower parts of the story. It just felt like a Jane Austen book but as I said with the English fairy tale quality to it and it was just amazing absolutely amazing. It missed off the five stars just because of a couple of little things in here with some of the footnotes being a bit boring. Like I said that some of those slow bits in between just stopped it from being that five stars but this is definitely a new favourite for me. Then we have a book that I'm so so disappointed in and that is Silence of the Girls by Pat by Barker. So this is actually a story of the Trojan War in the same time period as the Iliad. It's actually a retelling of it but from a Queen Berecius, Berecius, I'm sorry, someone did say how to pronounce it in the comments but I still can't get it right. So it's from her perspective, so the prize that Achilles and Agamemnon end up fighting over. And so you see it from her perspective and I thought that was so interesting and I had such high hopes for this book because honestly she's barely a footnote in the Iliad. Like she's mentioned a handful of times in a sentence here or there but you don't ever get to see how she's affected. Like she came from being a queen to being a slave and she didn't have a choice in this. Literally the day that Achilles slaughtered her husband and her brothers he then took her into his bed and she didn't get a choice in this. And so I was expecting it to be so powerful. And you know what? The story, yes. The writing, hell no. I really couldn't get on with the writing. There was so much swearing and you know what? I read Crescent City. That's got loads of swearing in it. That doesn't normally bother me. I mean, it bothers me to a certain extent, but if it's kind of works, so like it's an urban fantasy, it works. This is a historical retelling. I read the Iliad alongside this, which was honestly perfection. They don't swear in it at all. They have other words that they use that are derogatory. Why that wasn't used instead, I don't know. But it just made it really frustrating. And some of the sentences, the way they were doing it, was so modernised and almost like slang-like and I couldn't get on with it. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for making Greek mythology and stuff a lot more accessible. Make the classics accessible. I am sorry about the lighting. It is such a cloudy day. Um, but don't you don't need the swearing. You don't need all like the slang-like language and stuff. Like, no. And it really pulled me out of the story. So this ended up being a really, really low three stars. Honestly, bordering on two stars. I was so frustrated. I loved what it was doing. I loved the storyline to this, but just hated the writing. I really couldn't get on with it. So that's... Oh, so disappointing to me because I really wanted to love this book. And then we have something where the writing is amazing and that is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and this is a series of 12 short stories all about the different cases that Mr Holmes and Dr Watson got up to and some of them were absolutely amazing, a couple were a little bit boring. Overall I did love this book, came out as 4.5 stars, I love the writing, I love the adventures. This was perfect to read while I was going on little short train journeys, which is what I was doing with this. It was great. Definitely something that I want to, I mentioned it during my vlogs and stuff, but definitely something I want to do more of in getting short story collections to read while I'm out and about traveling. It worked so, so well. I really enjoyed my time with this and it meant that I read this slowly over the course of the month so I could really appreciate it and it was really nice to go back to a book where you just have the amazing writing and it's just so classically 
Arthur Conan Doyle's writing like I can't confuse it with anything else it just worked so so well so yeah absolutely adored this and if you don't know who Sherlock Holmes is I'll be surprised um but he lives at 221b Baker Street and is consulted on different mysteries and stuff to get involved in because the police aren't very good in this book then we have another book that I was a bit disappointed by and that's the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix I was actually really looking forward to this book because obviously it's vampires is a book club sounds perfect we're set in america and yeah i didn't like this <laughs> so i liked the actual idea behind it having this book club and everything to go to we have a series of housewives they all get together and they have different um true crimes that they read each month so then they get together and discuss it and i loved all of that what i hated was the men in this book were so sexist and just honestly really annoying people. So we have this gentleman that moves into town and at first everyone seems to really love him and everything seems amazing. Then something starts happening and children start going missing and our main character starts thinking that he is involved. So she convinces her book club and so they want to go and convince their husbands so that they can do something about this person, get the police involved. Except the husbands just shoot them down. They're just like, oh, your imaginations are running wild and all of this. Our main character's husband is an absolute dick. Like, he's so horrible. He's a psychiatrist and he goes, I understand things. You need to take these tablets. I know what I'm seeing. You're just being hysterical and all of this. And I just think, you are such an asshole. Like, no. So I really, I just didn't like that. Also, the end of the book, how they actually deal with the person, I mean, it's vampires, it's on the front, it's not actually a spoiler, it was just ridiculous, in my opinion. And I I didn't like that so yeah this was actually quite disappointing I did expect some dark humor and stuff in here which I suppose you can say at the end it is kind of that dark comical thing but by that point I was so frustrated with the characters and everything in this book that I was just like I just can't get on with this so that's kind of what let it down I liked the idea of it but the execution the male characters in this book the way they treated their wives no not okay not okay with any of it. And then we have a book that I did quite like and that's The Horseman by Christina Henry. So this is the last book that I'm going to be talking about this month. I enjoyed this. It's a Sleepy Hollow retelling and yeah it was great. So it's all about the headless horseman. We're following our main character and there is transgender representation. So he is someone that his has been brought up by his grandparents and his nan is always trying to get him to be the girl that she believes like that's who you are that's how you should be stop dressing like a boy stop running around that's not who you are etc so they're at loggerheads all the time but then you have the granddad and the granddad is very accepting very much like nope this is my ben and everything and then something starts happening something really sinister in these woods now they've always been told from a young age don't go into the woods don't do that but then something happens somebody dies and you start hearing all these rumors and they're just like sleepy hollow is a place filled of magic and you have the headless horseman and that's who everyone believes it to be ben's granddad's like no that's not real the headless horseman's not real etc and you're just following this story and ben's perspective of it all and i really liked it it was really nice i read it in two sittings it was exactly what i needed i mean christina henry in general i like her retellings they're not for everyone and some of them i prefer over others i think when i've read the other book I have by her ghost tree I'm then going to do a ranking video because I enjoy all of her books I think they're all very well done like I said some are better than others and this is one of the better ones I did enjoy it not my absolute favorite by her but it was really nice with just like the magic and stuff in this and how it all wove together and obviously the transgender representation I thought was really good and just that battle of wills until Nan finally accepts who Ben actually is and I like that I like the way it all turned out in this book so yeah there is um a few gory moments in here though like those descriptions of the deaths and stuff that's gory very gory um yeah overall four stars but there we have it those are the 10 books that I read this month I mean granted I am in the middle of one of them but it's been a good month honest oh my gosh no I forgot to get one off the shelf. Hang on. Okay, it's so the tenth and final book that we're going to be talking about. It's Aristotle and... Oh my god, no. Okay, I've got them now. Right, so then we have another four star and that's Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Elerisanias. And this was really cute. 
I enjoyed this book. We're following Aristotle and he is a teenage boy. He is struggling because he's not a child but not yet an adult and he's in that in-between stage struggling with his emotions and stuff while also trying to deal with the fact that his elder brother is in prison and everyone just acts as if he's died. Like they don't talk about him, there's no pictures of him and he just feels so lost because it's just like but that's my brother. You know his family just refuses to talk about him so he's dealing with all of that as well as the fact that his family doesn't like the fact that he is a bit of a loner, doesn't really have loads of friends and stuff, until one day he meets Dante and Dante helps him learn to swim and they build up a friendship from there and Dante is struggling because as much as both our characters are Mexican-American Dante struggles with it with knowing who he is. We just see this blossoming friendship, we have different things about trying to accept who you are, how to deal with feelings and stuff and just growing up and the difficulties that it can bring about and I just thought it was really cute, really heartwarming. I didn't expect it from this book, like it's a YA contemporary romance and that's not something I ever would have picked up if I'd known but I just got drawn in by Aristotle and Dante which has nothing to do with the literary people, it's just their names by the way. Just putting that out there um and yeah i mean overall i think it was a really heartwarming lovely story i do want to get the second book because i really want to see where their relationship blossoms and i just think it was really cute then on the complete opposite end of that spectrum from a cute like blossoming gay romance to one that is so dark and twisted it's unreal and that's these violent delights by micah never ever never ever um and um yeah this this is dark and twisted and a very difficult read at times so we have these two boys that are very much drawn to one another so you have julian and paul and they end up in a relationship but it's so toxic it's unreal and when i was reading this book and the way it is on the synopsis it goes on about how Julian is the one that's being the toxic person, that he's drawn Paul into him and Paul just kind of gets lost and is drowning and dealing with all of this. But by the end of the book I was I was changing my mind and I was just like you know what maybe it's Paul that's the twisted one which I mean that wasn't a maybe by the end of this book that was a definite um but with terms of like the toxicity of the relationship and stuff but then the way it ended just ah uh, this was a book that was kind of like all over the place for me. It started off really good, really dark and seductive and then kind of the middle hit and it got a little bit repetitive. Paul kind of started getting on my nerves a little bit and then the ending happened and I was just like oh okay and the very like the very last bit on how it ended like the last couple sentences I actually really like and it makes me think that if I was ever to reread this book which I probably will I'll probably enjoy it a lot more and be looking for a lot more things. As it stands this came out as a 3.5 stars but I do think upon reread it could be higher but yeah this this is not going to be for everyone. This is a very dark book. There's trigger warnings for suicide and honestly loads and loads of things. Lots of things going on in this book. Um, so I would definitely check the trigger warnings for this. I picked it up because of Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction, how she absolutely adores this book and I can see why it is very good and it is very dark but yeah I, I would also say it's not for everyone. Yeah I it was just so interesting especially when I read Aristotle first and I was just like oh this is such a cute one, it's so like heartwarming and everything and then you have this one and it's like bam toxicity, darkness, despair and I was just like wow. Okay so now that is all 10 books that I have read this month. I can't believe I forgot them. They were on the shelf. It's because I got all the books off last night and I was tired so I clearly didn't do that properly. But there we go. Let me know what was your favourite book of the month and I I'm always interested, always on the lookout for new books, so definitely let me know. If you made it this far, then let's put a little book stack emoji. And yeah, I think we'll leave it there for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below, and I will, of course, catch you in the next one.